Phoenix is a great framework for building fast applications in Elixir. Unfortunately, there are things that can slow down your application. For example, a long-running task or integrating with a third-party API. Here we have a demo app, but it has an issue. When a user fills out the contact form, there's a delay while the email is being sent. We're going to solve this by offloading the work into an async or background job. And to do that, we'll use the XQ job processing library. XQ uses Redis as a store for background jobs and handles things like concurrency, job persistence, and retries for you with a format that is rescue and sidekick compatible. One side note, before adding any Redis-backed queuing library to your Elixir application, ensure that the needs of your application can't be handled by OTP. So let's get started. XQ uses Redis, so we'll have to have that running. I'm on a Mac, so I'll install it using Homebrew. Now from our applications mix file, we'll include XQ as a dependency. We'll also need to include XQ in the application list. Then let's download our dependencies. Now we can configure our application to use XQ. Here we're doing some basic setup. The host and port variables tell XQ how to access Redis. Name lets you customize XQ's registered name. We'll leave that as the default XQ. Concurrency defines the number of concurrent workers allowed. And queues. Here we're creating a single queue named email, which we'll use to listen for our email jobs. You can configure this and add additional queues. Our message controller is where we're handling the post from the form and sending the email. Mailer.sendContactEmail is where the bottleneck is. This is what we'll want to pull into a worker. We'll create our worker in lib with a module called sendEmailWorker. Inside our module, we'll create the perform function and inside it add our long running mailer.sendContact email. On the next line, we're going to print a message so we see when the work is completed in our logs. Now that mailer.sendContact email has been added to our worker, we can remove it here. To onqueue our job, we'll call xq.onqueue and pass in four arguments. xq, the name of the queue we want to handle this job, the name of the worker, and the arguments that the perform function in the worker requires. Now we'll start up our server. And going back to the contact form, if we fill it out and submit it again, the delay is gone. From our development logs, we can see the message that was printed from our worker. Now another great feature of using XQ is that we can bring in the optional XQ UI library, which provides an interface where we can easily view different stats on our jobs. To add it, we'll go back to our mix file and add xqui as a dependency. Then we'll download our new package. In our config file, the options we have access to are web port, web namespace, and server. Since we're using Phoenix, we can remove web port and web namespace. The server option allows you to keep from starting the web server during tests. From our Phoenix router, we'll add a new pipeline. At the end of this pipeline, we're using the XQ UI router plug with the namespace set to the default of XQ. Then we'll create a scope at slash XQ and tell it to use the new XQ pipeline.
and then we'll forward all traffic to slash XQ to the XQ UI router plug router index action. Now if we restart our web server and go to localhost port 4000 slash XQ, we'll see our new jobs UI. So here we can see how many jobs are being processed, what the size of each queue is, the jobs being retried. We can also remove jobs from a queue. An important aspect of job processing is the ability to schedule jobs. Let's say we wanted to wait one hour after our contact form was submitted before we actually delivered that email. How would we do that? The XQ API provides the ability to schedule jobs to be processed at some point in the future. So let's update our code to do just that. First, we'll go back to our config file and add scheduler enable true to our XQ config. Then in our message controller, we'll change our function call from on queue to on queue in and add 3600 seconds to get our hour delay. Now, if we go back to our app, we'll see an error. This is because we made changes to our config file and didn't restart the server. So let's go ahead and restart it. And great, the page loads. Now let's submit another contact form. If we go to our jobs interface page, we'll see that we have one scheduled job set to be processed in one hour. Hope you enjoyed this episode and happy coding.